What's your magpie doing? Being like the strongest unit on my squad by far. Like I, I welcome criticism in Super Auto Pets. Sometimes people will be like, what's your best unit doing? And I'm like, brother, you should be calling out like the rest of the squad. People will look at a team that has like a 50-50 Marmoset and then four base stat tier sixes and be like, what's the Marmoset doing? It's doing everything, brother. Be like a subtle scallywag. I think in that case, you invested too much into a crap unit. Well, yeah, but you get resources every turn. But the only thing you get are crap units until, like, turn seven. You can't save any dry powder. I'd rather have bacon. You know, I mean, you know, roll for levels here. Okay, I, this squad looks okay to me. We're going to have three bees spawning. That it at least is half decent. Dry powder is not a myth. I've seen it. Now, I know this is going to hurt because I just said I'm not going to watch the bear. Last night, I had approximately 90 minutes of YouTube work to do. So... I, I've talked about my philosophy on this before. When I'm doing some work, thumbnails, putting together a TikTok to send to a sponsor, doing some dishes, something like that, I prefer not to watch good things. Because good things take your focus, or they at least are enhanced by having your focus. So instead, I usually put on a garbage comedy from the mid-2000s, so I laugh now and then while also tick, 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 ha, 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 tick, 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 tick. I watched, <laughs> you're not ready for this one. If you were mad that I watched White Chicks on Friday, you're not ready for this one. I watched Dumb and Dumberer when Harry met Lloyd on my right monitor. And it was great timing because they really, actually legitimately could not make that movie in 2023 that is uh that is a movie that they could not make in the modern day and what's crazy for me is i remember my dad renting it from the video store now this is not one of those stories where my dad rented it and he laughed the entire time He rented it, and then my entire family watched it without chuckling at all, I think, for the entire thing. But man, oh man. Meat bone. Let me think about this for a second. You're pretty good. And you know what? Give me health. Give me a rat. Give me some meat. I think we're going yard on this one. No, it was not good back then. It was... It was definitely still bad back then. I have it on DVD. My condolences. Um, it's a strong team there. Why'd you rewatch it then? Because, you know, I know it sounds backwards, but I was looking for like the worst movie I could find. fine and I found it <laughs> could have watched Master of Disguise I'm not fucking with you I watched it probably like six months ago so I, it's too recent I've seen it too recently Master of Disguise is at least better than Dumb and Dumberer. I don't think many people would question that. It's it's insanely, horrendously bad. Dumb and Dumberer. Also Master of Disguise, but Dumb and Dumberer may possibly be the... It might be the worst movie of the 2000s that I've seen, at least. 
What about Harold and Kumar go to White Castle? Harold and Kumar go to White Castle is a good movie. So what about it? What about it? Freddy Got Fingered is worse? Freddy Got Fingered is better because it's more interesting. Freddy Got Fingered so clearly springs forth from the mind of a madman that there's something fascinating about watching it. Um, whereas Dumb and Dumberer was clearly made because Dumb and Dumber was very popular 10 years ago, but they did like... Movies all... No, I shouldn't say always. Movies often do that, where they're like, the first movie captures lightning in a bottle, and then for the second one, it's just like some insane plot. Like, the dean wants to shut down the fraternity that Harry and Lloyd are uh, pledging in. But, you know, no matter, they keep tripping over their own shoelaces, but watch as they take down the establishment. And you're like, that's not what I'm here for. Where's Mary Swanson? This is interesting. This is interesting. Give me a radio. Yeah, like the Dark Knight. Oh, I, I, dude, I watched the first eight minutes of that on Kick yesterday. It looks good. I think I might stick around and try to see the rest. I think you need to go to the front now. Give me a salad real quick. They should make the Swanson spin-off. Definitely, definitely they should make the Swanson spin-off. We know what happens when Harry met Lloyd. We know what happens when Harry and Lloyd meet Mary Swanson. We know what happens 20 years later. Man, I remember essentially nothing about Dumb and Dumber 2. I do remember that Rob Riggle is in it. It's their own, all three of them are the same movie, basically. I mean, I'm just thinking, it might, I wonder if Dumb and Dumber is the, first off, calling it a trilogy just feels wrong. I wonder if it's the worst trilogy with the best one movie in it. Because I genuinely feel like Dumb and Dumber, I'm a, I'm a product of the 90s. Dumb and Dumber is like a top 10 comedy of all time. And then the two sequels are like, the prequel and the sequel, I should say, are zeros. The Matrix Matrix 1 is like a 10. Matrix 2 is like a 7, I think. Matrix 3 is like a 4, but it's fucking... I mean, you just add it up, it clears the Dumb and Dumber trilogy easily. I'm not going sniping build yet. I'm going... We're playing win now ball. Don't need it. Well, three rats actually could be could be interesting. What I'm looking for the most, garlic could actually go hard. I'm looking for another lemur. I, I don't think I've ever used a mosasaurus this week, at least. Five wins. Playing like the Canucks. Lieber! <laughs> uh, oh, I buffed the wrong unit, but you have to be there for that position anyway. Um, it's so funny. My daughter, sometimes I'm like, do you want to go to the playground? Usually she's like, yes. Sometimes though, she's like, no, I want to go home. And I say, what do you want to do at home? And she says, I want to watch TV with daddy. And I say, oh, what do you want to watch on TV? And she says, I want to watch the hockey game. Now, obviously hockey's been over for like a week now. Um, I had to explain to her. She's like, is Vancouver playing? And I'm like, no, Vancouver doesn't play anymore. And then she says, why? And I say, because they don't win. So now, like anytime she sees like a banner advertising the Canucks, or like an ad on TV about the Canucks, she goes, like, that's Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver, they don't play. They don't win, so they don't play. And I'm like, she's right. 
Might as well, you know, teach her now. Better to learn it now than to learn it, you know, at any other later point, I guess. There's no reason to give her false hope. I'm going sicko mode on this one for sure. When she starts sports betting. No child of mine will be a sports gambler. I think I'm just going to lie to her and be like, we lost all of our money in sports gambling. And then she maybe won't do it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no joke, my dad said that about the stock market. Depending on your age, like that might not be like a joke, you know? It might have been the dot com crash or something like that. Everybody in Canada had like 90% of their retirement in Nortel. Lieber! Okay, seven wins, round 11. We're really going for it here. You can do more with a pita. Mosasaurus is going crazy. LeBron James. Do you see the video? Um, I mean, it, I think this happened in the NBA a long time ago. But the dude tried to inbound a ball, and it hit another player in the face. It knocked his goggles off, and then LeBron James put on the fallen goggles and stared at the dude whose goggles got knocked off. My whole Twitter feed is just LeBron James videos, man. It's so good. It's crazy. <laughs> I missed out on like 20 years of this guy being silly. Chocolate? Tackle and fuel? I think you can survive with a pita as well. Chocolate? Your ass is not sticking around forever, but you're sticking around for now. Chocolate? Chocolate? Okay, it's still pretty good. They, they post that clip so often. I've seen a lot. The one of him on HBO, and the guy says, like, my father used to always say, like, whether you... He's, he made up, like, a bespoke quote that has never been uttered in history before, and then LeBron says, yeah, I know that one. Actually, that's my favorite saying. It's so good. Okay, we're going to try to sneak a little lionfish out there. Yes, he lies a lot. It seems like it, but they're like funny lies. Like he's just lying like for no reason, which I think is probably something you should not do, but is also like very hilarious. This one hurts. Or does it? Or does it? Pancakes? Pancakes? Oh! Now there's a 10 piece! <laughs> oh. Slightly atypical 10 piece. Not that atypical because we still had a big clownfish and a hippo, but still. Interesting. I don't know. This just seems funny to me. Let's give it a try. like a concerned ranger like um Alexis Lafreniere It's a hockey joke
Nice units opponent. He doesn't even have a level two and then also a tier two, three, six unit, dude. It's so embarrassing for you. Known draft bust, Alexis Lafreniere. It's just funny to me, cause like, I remember when the World Juniors were in Vancouver, he made the team as like a, an underager. Well, not under, but like lower end of the age. So he was like 16 or 17. That was only like four years ago. And now his ass is being called a draft bust. It's like he's, he's still so young. He's like barely able to even like get a beer when he goes out to dinner in the city where he plays. And people are like, he's fucked. He's got <laughs> his old ass is torched, man. He's got no chance. Let's get that health. Let's grab this. Obviously, I'll take a Lemur on this one, dude. And honestly, the radio was doing great work for us last time. So let's keep it going. Nah. Nothing's even close to leveling. I'd rather have some meat on the squad. That looks right to me. They got their own rat. Big whoop. Oh no! <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's wild to be an age now that if I were a pro in any sport, they'd be like, this motherfucker is over. Justin, I hate to break it to you, but like, I'm 34 and I'm that age. You're 38, right? There's like two NHL players that are that age or older. And every year, people are like so condescending. They're like, it's a miracle that they can even get out of bed in the morning. It's true. Chara, he, Chara played until he was like 41 or 42, I think. Mark andre Fleury played... Uh, he's still playing. He was first overall pick in 2003. He's probably like 38. I mean, goalies don't get body checked that often, but I'm sure their hips are like fucked up what about yager bro it's not this listen no disrespect for yager but he's playing in like the second tier czech league on a team that he owns like there's a difference between being like a 48 year old guy in the czech league and being like a 48 year old guy in the nhl lads we're screwed I called a 27-year-old soccer player old today. He's only two years older than me. <laughs> it hurts, man. It's, I mean, it's the truth, but it hurts. Maybe the, the truth hurts. You come to terms with it. I mean, I think that people, like, you know, as, again, I'm just waiting for the librarian to be like, you did this bit on May the 3rd of this year, please. It's too soon for a redux. It's just, it came up naturally in conversation, okay? But, um, you know, the f you die like several deaths when it comes to conceptualizing your age if you watch professional sports. The first time is like when the people that are being drafted are your age. And you're like, wow, I missed my chance. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure at this point, the dream of playing in the NBA is probably dead because I don't even play basketball and they're drafting people born the same year I was born. And then the second one is like people that are in your age are like past their prime. And then the next one, I think we're getting to that now is like people that are younger than you and had like good careers are starting to retire. Like people in their early 30s are starting to retire. And then I'm sure the next one is like the last person who's your age or older retires and you're now older than everybody else that plays the sport. And then like the people getting drafted were born the same year as like your kid. The people retiring are like, think about my parents and they're not even that old. They're only in their like mid 50s, but like. They're, well, they're late 50s, I guess, now, but 
the people retiring in the NHL are now like older than, or almost younger than their own child. Or like when, if you grew up watching Keith Kachuk play, and then now two of Keith Kachuk's sons are, are popping off. Take that. Okay, old ass. It's true. Justin, have you uh, added okay old ass to your vocabulary yet? It's very powerful. Looking into this. <laughs> very interesting. Looking into this. Okay, old ass. You ruined Squeaks' day with this bit? Honestly, I'm glad to hear it because, like, Squeaks' chat is a fun place to be, okay? Don't get me wrong, it's a fun place to be. But it creates this uh, attitude that we should always be, like, bullying the streamers. And in some streams it works, and in some streams it doesn't. People come to my chat after being in Squeaks' chat, and they just start, they, hey, fuck you, you fucking piece of shit, bald ass moron and then i'm like what did i do to deserve that and i'm like i didn't do it I did. they're like oh, this is just i've been chatting in squeaks's chat for six hours it's just muscle memories i'd like you to level and stick around and then you got equipment so i'm not getting rid of you so i'm taking you we can find our way here sounds like he needs better mods no he likes it that's what's crazy I'll be a scumbag again. I don't mind. <laughs> Other people would not extend to me the same courtesy that I'm choosing to extend to them. Oh, snipe me. That guy's a total freak. He's here. He's here. Hello, Squeaks. I don't have like a clever segue or anything for that. I was going to talk about only up, but I was like, what's the point? <laughs> hang on, hang on. Ooh, I still want my lemur to pop though, but maybe there's no, maybe we need something like that instead. Oh, and then keep the rat as it is. I'm not going to play only up today, by the way, because I'm not confident that from the favelas I can beat the game in the time that's left in stream. So here's my, my tentative stream plan for the week here, okay? Hang on. You got me? Today, this and um, Battle Bit Remastered. You're welcome, Chibli. Tomorrow... Only up. And I think it would be very nice if we beat the game tomorrow. And then we're not going to speedrun it. We'll put it away forever. Um, Thursday. Is Thursday not Final Fantasy 16's release day? I think I'm all in, man. Holy cow. We lost to our own rat. <laughs> oh, man. That's got to hurt. And then it would probably be like Friday, Final Fantasy 16. Unless on Thursday, I decide that that's enough. I don't know, man. 50%. Nobody's living, though. Nobody's living long enough to make this work. We're all dead. My whole squad is dead. Alright. That's the end of that one then. <laughs> I really thought we had something going there. Bro, it's St. Jean-Baptiste Day in Quebec on Friday. I don't celebrate that holiday. I have enough holidays. Maybe a helpless alien. Oh, don't take me to your leader. Mm. 
We know. Well, dude, honestly, people are not ready for this take. Because, I mean, you can't share truth on Twitch. You just get hit with copium over and over. I'm telling you sincerely, I would love to work more. It's just that, like, my ass is at the margins right now. I know you're like, really? With your 25-hour work week? I know. That's what's, like, so pathetic about it. Like yesterday, okay? Streamed 9 to 2. I got to record two Super Auto Pets videos. In between the Super Auto Pets videos, I had a phone call with my doctor where she said, why is the insurance company telling you to get a CT scan? That's my job. And I was like, I don't know either. And she's like, well, do you think you need a CT scan? And I'm like, I don't know if I need a CT scan. What do you think? And she's like, well, I tend to go with what the patient thinks. And I'm like, why the hell are we talking? Because I don't think I need a CT scan. So that was like 15 minutes. We recorded Super Auto Pets videos that pushed me like all the way to when I had to leave for daycare because my daycare now has... Uh, uh, they had a doctor's appointment yesterday, which meant that I had to go pick up my kid 45 minutes early. When I picked up my kid 45 minutes early, I was two minutes late. And this lady said, I almost called you. You were so late. Lady, it was two minutes late, to, but which was actually like 43 minutes early versus the time that I thought to get you picked up. How do people with a normal job deal with this kind of these standards? OK, then when I picked her up. She was like, oh, by the way, I have another appointment tomorrow, so it's early pickup tomorrow. Okay, so that's 3.45. Like, I, I, I got to go that 3.45 again tomorrow. And then, so today, I got the early pickup again, which means I'm only going to be able to record two Super Auto Pets videos. Then, tomorrow, my kids got her first dentist appointment at like 3.10, which is even earlier than the early pickup. So I got to go pick her up, like basically right when the stream ends, go pick up my kid, take her to the dentist, sit with my kid at the dentist, which I'm sure is going to be like torturous. Thursday, Friday should be fine. But I'm just saying, like, it's not like I've, I've finished the stream and I'm like, ah, I just can't muster the energy to talk and play video games anymore. It's the easiest job of all time. I gotta be like the only human being on the planet right now that's like, my mental health would be better if I actually did my job more. Okay, Yak could go crazy here. You could stream weekends? I can't, I'm being like, world's greatest dad. If she gets sedated at the dentist, do you have the opportunity to do the best thing of all time? I'm pretty sure they're not going to give my two-and-a-half-year-old anesthetic <laughs> for, <laughs> for uh, her first dentist appointment. You could honestly just do what some streamers do, secondary channel with no cam or microphone. You, you're not... You, I, I appreciate what you're doing, but you're not listening. I, I can't. I don't have the time. If I had the time... To do that, I would just be streaming the way I normally stream. How about... Give me something like that. But I'm just, I've marked it on my calendar. I already circled it. 2032. I think 2032 I can get back to a, a better balance. That's not that far away. It seems like a long time away right now. Why did I give you the cherry? I, I come when called. I jump when you circle the cherry. I sing like a good canary. What do you do? You think you're Liz Fair? Now you're getting the meat bone perk. I love seeing a lot of huns, and then one person hitting me with a, with a rat jam. Someone here knows Exile and Guyville, and for that we respect it. He said, come, I can't. The song's about the female orgasm, brother. You're not catching a double entendre. There's no entendre. It's just about fucking. Well, flowers more about fucking and sucking cock. Canary's more about eating pussy and maybe a little ass. 
Great album. Great. I was going to say great album, though, but then I said, no, I'm not adding a though. Like, I'm not adding a modifier to that. It's just a great album. Absolutely great album. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. So many people hitting me with huzz. Go back to r slash hentai. Oh, fuck. 1217 duck? Oh, so you can jerk off 24-7, but I can't listen to horny music? Or is it because the horny music is written by a woman, so that's threatening to you? But when Anthony Kiedis says, Spit on my dick and I put it in the lickety, as they do when they do in splickety. You're like, so true, Anthony, so true, Anthony. But Liz Fair writes a song called, like, Flickin' the Bean, and you're like, ooh, this is icky, it's uncomfortable. The hell's wrong with you? I'm getting three wins this time total. <clears throat> three wins would be a bit of a dream. Hey, there's number two. I'm not afraid to listen to music written by strong women. Liz Fair, Alanis Morissette, Sleet or Kinney, Lush, members of My Bloody Valentine. No, not Pink so much. <laughs> Kim Gordon, sure. Katy Perry, not really. <laughs> Japanese Breakfast, yeah, 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 for sure. Mitski, I've heard one of her songs on the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month ride on Peloton. Nobody, 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 nobody. I know that one. Sell me. Buy me a sniper. Lil' Kim. I took the Lil' Kim ride with Cody Rigsby. I realized, straight up, not lying to you in the slightest, I do not know a single Lil' Kim song unless you count Lady Marmalade. I've never felt more out of my depth than when everyone started cheering for a song called How Many Licks. And I was like, I've never heard this song before in my life. You probably know my lip gloss is popping. Is that Lil' Kim? I know my lip gloss is cool. My lip gloss is popping. Living in the city can be demanding. I've pawned everything, everything I own, my toothbrush jar and my camera phone. The manager, Bevin, starts to abuse me. Hey man, I just want some muesli. I know what, I know, I'm familiar with lip gloss. I told you we're getting three wins. Last week I found out the basketball song is real and not just an NL bit. That's a <laughs> basketball is Curtis Blow's second most famous song. It's extremely real. And he's the lines are verbatim. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way they dribble up and down the court. Etc. We're no, we're getting we're getting a draw, we're getting three wins, we're getting two wins. Oh. <laughs> My favorite shot is the alley-oop. Beaver me, chinchilla me. Sure, sure. Yeah. Milky Sax. Did you see the movie Like Mike? It featured that song. I did not see Like Mike. What is this squad? <laughs> they threw me a bone, man. I did not see Like Mike. Um, I don't have anything against the movie. It is that one. Does that have Jonathan Lipnicki in it, or am I? I know that it has a uh, little Bow Wow, of course. King Mickey. We just got Kingdom Hearts. It does indeed have Jonathan Lipnicki. Jonathan 
The human head weighs 10 pounds, Lip Nicky. Lip Nicky does sound like a word that Anthony Kiedis makes up. <laughs> I know no, every, no one said it. Everyone was thinking it. Don't deny it. Just for now. It has Jesse Plemons in it? That's crazy. It's crazy that Jesse Plemons hasn't always been at least in his late 20s, if not early 30s. Like, imagining Jesse Plemons as a teenager is very bizarre. I can see, like, a little kid. Because really, as a man, I'm here to tell you that I really think, like, the mo you might think that the most you you'll ever look is when you're, like, 29. But I'm pretty sure the most you you'll ever look is when you're, like, three. Because you also look basically the same when you're like 70. Like the, <laughs> just go with me on this one, okay? You, when you're a baby, you most closely resemble yourself as an old man. And then there's this like five decade long period in the middle where it's like a different guy. Whoa, who's this guy? He got a lot taller, his bones and muscles kind of shifted positions and stuff like that. Not everyone ends up bald. Not everyone, but probably you. Me, obviously, that's not even up for discussion, but probably you. No, the baldness gene is passed down on the X chromosome and my mom's... Dad's brother has a full head. He's got a piece. He's got the same guy that Ted Danson has. He's got a piece you just never noticed. He's bald, brother. There's nothing wrong with it. You might as well come to terms with it. It'd be nice if we all lived long enough to go bald. Okay, you stink. You don't, though. You don't. Shut the hell up, I'm crying. Bald dancing is an urban myth. I don't think, it's just not, I just don't buy the kinematics. <laughs> the badger should definitely be at the back, not that it matters. I just don't, I simply don't believe that like an 80 year old man's hair looks like that. It's not just jealousy, like there's lots of people my age that have full heads of hair. But like, it's more just like, come on. It's like that influencer who's like 95 years old, but she looks like a, a current hip-hop star. And then when she gets asked for her beauty tips, she's like, I moisturize. You're like, you believe that? If you believe that, maybe, maybe. I mean, it's nice to believe that people are always telling the truth, but... I don't buy it. Okay, this is, now we got a squad. Do we have, it's tier, it's turn five. We got a squad. Are you saying she's a vampire? No, I'm saying she's had plastic surgery and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just a natural part of life. Yeah, I'm saying the world is a vampire. It's hard to stay young looking with all the stress the world throws at us. Am I right? I'm genuinely asking, am I right? Plastic surgery is a natural part of life. All I'm saying is you guys are very anti-plastic surgery, but you just wait till the shin plasty comes out and you can add four inches to your height in like an outpatient surgery that only takes 45 minutes i'm about to have the tallest chat in twitch history i already did it <laughs> they have that yeah but it like it fucks you up for like 
like months, I think. Eventually they're gonna get they're gonna make it better, probably. I don't know how. It's not my domain. You can hear the music on the AM radio. I'll add a crocodile to the squad. I'm not adding another lemur just yet. It's not it's not apropos. You're definitely gone too. It's two-year recovery time? Holy cow, dude. That's crazy. I'm so glad that I was just genetically born with the perfect height. Five, nine and a half. So I've never felt the need to get something like that. If anything, I could... I've got like half an inch to spare. <laughs> around oh. you know what I don't think you belong on the squad I think for now we can run this and this and then next round we're getting chocolate mm. I'm 6'3 I wish I were a little shorter sometimes I think that's fair like I'll just be honest with you I've never in my life I mean, there's, I've been on airplanes, and there have been times where I've been like, I wish I had more leg room, but I've never been like in pain on an airplane. But I also think there is an element, an element of that is not being very tall, obviously. But I also feel another element of that is that people have had it too good for too long, and they just complain about everything. Like, there's definitely people shorter than me that complain about leg room every time they fly. One of my favorite go-to bits. It's not anti-American. Lots of people are saying it's anti-American. There's probably other people like this in the world as well. But it's um, Americans, when you ask them to take a 20-hour drive, sure, brother, just let me go to the bathroom first. Americans, when you ask them to take a three-hour flight, no! We were, when we were in Alaska, we went on a, a very, very small hike and there was a man coming down from the top of the mountain and he was having a conversation uh, with another person. They were crossing each other's paths. She was like, did you just come down from the top of the mountain? And he said, yeah, I have a three hour flight later. So I wanted to stretch my legs. And at first I laughed and then I was like, three hours? This like... No disrespect, but it's nothing. You lose the whole day with a three-hour flight? You literally don't. Is the shoe box in your office? There is a box in my office with like two pairs of shoes in it, yeah. Very important. It's right there. I am pointing to it as, as I, I, see, I see two pairs of nice shoes in it. It's right there. I'm just waiting for confirmation. I'm waiting for a read receipt. Does it have my heels? Yes, it does. <laughs> Saved. Okay, few. Well, I think here's what happened. You said before you start your stream, load all the shoe boxes. And there were four shoe boxes on the ground next to the front door. So I moved them into the trunk. And then imagine my surprise, I sit down and start my stream. And there's another shoe box sitting on this bar cart, which is still a part of our lives. <laughs> I didn't realize that there were two separate ecosystems for the shoe boxes. Seems like you missed one. She got me. How about some chocolate? You could use, if you're sticking, take a lemon. Why don't you take this? Oh man, she boomed me. Fair trade. Oh, we win these. 
Men. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Oh, yeah, I actually need another one. That's the problem with this, is that we've now hit critical mass. Come on. Come on. Come on. I, actually, maybe having a hawk would be nice instead of two links. Okay, for now, just take a pie. Cool drink of water, just a sweet surprise. Not a big fan of that scorpion right now. I'll tell you that. Not a big fan of that scorpion. Oh, no. Oh, double it. Double it and give it to the next guy. Crane kind of goes sicko mode. I'm like a... I'm a crane believer most of the time. This week, I think there's like a... And I might be wrong, just to start off here. This week, I think there's like a brief window where it's like really good. And then immediately, like starting in the mid or early teen rounds, everybody just does snipers over and over. So your your heron or your crane stands a great chance of being sniped. It's a tough choice here. It's a tough choice here. Worm and cat build OP, brother. I've, listen, I'm still waiting for the day. I love this. I'm, I know we spent a lot rolling here, but it's to set us up for next route. The, um, I, I would love to try a worm build. But I need to get a level 2 worm. And I've never had the opportunity, at least as of yet. Okay, strong eel. Very strong eel. Credit where credit's due. One of these. Nice buff. Sell me. Add me. Buff me. I think we're getting outpaced starting soon. Maybe even starting like now. But if we can eke out like a, a scam victory here, anything could happen. Still skipping T-Rex? We took it like two runs ago and, and went sicko mode with it. I own you. <laughs> what happened? Nobody nobody got to attack that time. How about this time? Kill the hippo. Or at least wound it badly. It didn't do shit. It didn't do anything. It didn't do enough. It did oh, the hippo's gonna be too motherfucking strong. Hippo rat, you scumbag. You scumbag! Try again. The hawk is not doing it, man. Level 3 fish is kind of crazy, though. Hawk is gone. Leopard's in. Croc's coming out. One more roll. Okay, Croc's coming out first. NL, I added cardio to my gym routine instead of solely lifting weights, and I gotta say you were right. Well, it, it's funny, like you added peanut butter to your chocolate, I added chocolate to my peanut butter. After like a year and a half of just doing cardio, I added weights to my cardio, and I'm like, whoa, people are right, this is like a lot of fun. No! What was he right about? Young men undervalue cardio. For some reason, they, I think that what they tell themselves is that it's catabolic and they want to get huge, so like cardio equals bad. But actually the way I look at it is cardio is like a different kind of exercise because it requires the mental toughness to like enter a state of meditation for 90 minutes. And honestly, people who... And it's, it's the people who train themselves... To have like 45 seconds or a minute of rigorous exercise and then a minute or a two minute break in between sets. It's a very different load on the system than it is to hop on the exercise bike for an hour and just grind it out without doing any intervals or something like that. So I, I think I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm saying that I think right now there's some cardio arbitrage. People, in my opinion, they underrate 
the, the mental and possibly also the physical benefits of, of cardio because it can be boring. But you know what's funny is people are like, yeah, it's boring, that's why I, we win these! They're like, cardio is boring, I can't stick to it. And I'm like, well, why are you the same people in chat that when I tell you how I work out and I've got like 1700 workouts done on the Peloton, you're like, oh, why don't you just watch Netflix instead? Maybe because watching Netflix is boring as shit and that's why you can't keep your routine. I got it solved. I solved it. I tell you my solution and you're like, well, why don't you just fuck with your solution? Because I got the right answer already. For me, at least. You should totally be able to watch Netflix on the Peloton, though. You're not watching Netflix. You're biking. You can have a, a, an iPad or something. You can hook up an iPad or a television in the room. You can watch Netflix if you want. I'm just saying, when it comes to the output, I'm going to cook your ass. Can't you do both? Yeah, I guess in the 100-meter dash, why doesn't uh, Usain Bolt just put some Bluetooth earbuds in and like listen to a podcast while he's in the Olympics? It'd be like a powerful night, like Jonathan Marsh is so. It's not a competition, old ass. We're trying to get healthy. Are you trying to get healthy or are you trying to watch as much Netflix as possible when you're doing other shit? It's just not my... It's not a, an ambition for me. Why not both? Because it's going to distract you during your workout when you should be focusing on your workout. You can do both. Just stop telling me how to do mine when it's working out fine for me. It's torture? It's not torture. You're just weak. <laughs> Our granddads that were going over and dying to save the world would have killed to spend 90 minutes a day on the exercise bike. You think they would have been like, oh, but I want to be on my phone at the same time? When they were all in the fetal position in the trenches begging for like a, a can of old ass fish or something like that just to keep the demons away for two minutes, they would have killed for a 30 minute Emma Lovewell 90s rock ride. Why don't you take this for now? Take the radio. Lemur radio is kind of crazy this week, which is funny because it seems like pure anus. Can you pick a volume and stick with it? Can you pick my ass and kiss it? <laughs> Okay, just for, just for you guys, we're going to try this worm here this time. It may work. It may work. I'm only going to be mad if we don't get more. Worm cat? Bro, I got to wait like seven more rounds for the cat to come out, okay? Work with, I'm, I'm doing my best, but just work with me here. More worms, please. I'm not buying. I'm, well, I'm not buying you then either. Let's be real. Okay, I think that all of your asses are bad. You at least have some upside. Let's try you. How about another worm? Piece of shit. It's fucking so bad. So bad. Worm do anything challenge. The apple isn't even free? No, it costs two gold. I'm losing to the snail squad. Do you know how embarrassing that is for me? You keep rolling past the apple? It's two motherfucking gold for a 1-1. One, one.
I'm rolling again. The duck. Yes! Yes! <laughs> it's a 2 2 on the worm? No, it isn't. Because they changed the worm. It's consistent stats? Yeah, consistently bad. I'm thinking the worm has a chance, but it's got to get to level two first. At level two, it spawns a 3 3, right? No, it spawns a 2 2, which I think is still reasonable. To be fair, you haven't bought the apple once. To be, oh, you've never shot your own foot off with a shotgun? How do you know it's bad? It's, it's right there. Your foot's right there. Use the apples on the eel. That's a good point. Because on the eel, it's a two gold, one, 1. 1.5 instead of one, one. I feel like you, you don't know what you're talking about here. Here's, here's how we stay in the game. You go lemur, garlic press. You go clownfish. And you pray that you get a level. <laughs> and then, since we're not on lethal, we're rolling for more levels. Nothing that we bought, like no, no piece of bacon, no fortune cookie is going to save the run. The only thing that can save the run is more experience. That's just not fair. The scorpion's just overpowered. I'm telling you, this is the last time we're buying the worm. It's never happening again. Unless we get another worm. Okay, actually, that's pretty sizable. That's, that's a nice upgrade there. You had your chance. Run that. Worm me. It's never going to happen. Doesn't take benefit for the worm. Blames worm. It's not a benefit. The, the privilege of buying... An overpriced apple is not a benefit. It's like you going into the grocery store and like if you saw an apple and the apple itself was $2, you would be like, I'm not buying that apple. <laughs>